Hi, good morning class. I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, today we're going to talk about King Solomon's reign. Um, now King Solomon is David and Bathsheba's second son. Um, we're also going to discuss this coming Thursday the building of the temple. We're going to briefly just talk over that real quick, but go into more detail um, on Thursday. So let me back you up a little bit. Let's get let's head back to uh, King David for just a second. Before King David, the Israelites as a nation they were a bit shiftless and seemingly a you know aimless um, when viewed upon by other kingdoms. We all have um, remember the stories about how they became a nation, how they went into the Promised Land, what it looked like during the time of the judges, and then they have a king. They start to become more established. Well, King David is highly attributed to making the nation of Israel a strong nation. So he did bring them together as one people. He built a strong army. He conquered Jerusalem, and so now they have a stronghold. And other nations knew of the God of Israel. They had heard rumors and remembered stories all the way back to Egypt, uh, the Battle of Jericho. And so they were familiar with the God of the Israelites. Um, so when King Solomon takes leadership, he has a very substantial nation to work with. So God appeared to Solomon in a dream, and he promised him anything that he asked. Solomon chose understanding and discernment, asking God to help him govern his people well and wisely. God was so pleased with his request that he granted it along with much riches and honor and a long life. So over Solomon's 40-year reign, um, he did many, many great things. However, he did fall into temptation, and we're going to see how that affected him um, as a person, then also it affected the nation of Israel. So the peace um, a united Israel had once enjoyed, the massive building pro projects that Solomon headed off, and the successful commerce that he developed became the meaningless um, acts when Saul stopped pursuing God. So this is all about being obedient to God, living in his blessing, and then becoming very disobedient to God and turning your back and, and what happens in the end. So we're going to discuss Solomon's strengths and his weaknesses. So Solomon um, built the first temple. It was on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, and it was a seven-year building task, and it became one of the ancient wonders of the of the ancient world. Sorry, one of the wonders of the ancient world. Better. Um, and like I said, we're going to go into more detail on that on Thursday. So King Solomon also built majest a majestic palace, um, gardens, roads, government buildings. He accumu accumulated thousands of horses and chariots. Um, so after securing peace with the surrounding um, neighbors, he built up trade and became the wealthiest man of his time. So the fame of King Solomon spread. Um, of his wisdom, of his wealth throughout the known world. And many very important people and kings would come to see for themselves if what they heard and what was reported about Solomon was true. So one of these very powerful leaders was the Queen of Sheba. She had heard of Solomon's fame and visited him to test him with some very hard questions. So after seeing with her own eyes all that Solomon had built in Jerusalem, what he had done and hearing his wisdom, the queen blesses God. I love that. So here's what she is um, recorded to have said in 1 Kings 10, 67. She said, The report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom. But I, did, I, but I did not believe the reports until I came and by my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told to me. Your wisdom and prosperity suppresses the report that I heard. So, in the end, Solomon was a very prolific writer. Um, he's a poet, a scientist. He's accredited to, to have wrote. Sorry, he's accredited to have written much of the Book of Proverbs, the Song of Solomon, the Book of Ecclesiastes, and two Psalms. Um, First King tells us that he wrote 3,000 Proverbs and over 1,000 songs. So King Solomon's greatest strength was his unsurpassed wisdom granted to him by God. 
So there's one of my favorite biblical stories about two um, women. Um, both lived in the same house and had recently delivered newborn babies. But one of those babies had died and the mother of the dead baby tried to take the living baby from the other mother. But because there were no other witnesses that were living in the house, the two women were left to dispute about who was the true mother of this living child. Both claimed to have been their mother. And so they asked Solomon to determine which of these two should keep the newborn. And with astounding wisdom, Solomon suggested that the boy be cut in half with a sword and split between the two women. Deeply moved for the love of her son, the first woman, the first woman whose baby was alive said to the king, please, my lord, give her the baby. Do not kill him. But the other woman said, good, neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Solomon ruled that the first woman was the real mother because she preferred giving up the child rather than see him be harmed. So, however, in all of King Solomon's wisdom, he turned to worldly pleasures instead of pursuing God. Not only did he collect all sorts of treasure and surround himself with ornate luxury, he took several wives and concubines, most of whom were pagan. Solomon allowed lust to rule his heart instead of being obedient to God. He allowed his foreign wives to worship their native gods and he even had altars built to them inside of the city walls of Jerusalem. King Solomon's sins speak loudly to us in our current day of materialistic culture and uh, surroundings. When we worship our possessions and give um, credit to fame over God, we're always going to be headed for a fall. And so King, Sa King Solomon is an, exa an excellent example of um, continually pursuing God. Um, so in the end, King Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived, but also one of the most foolish. God had gifted him with unsurpassed wisdom, which Solomon squandered by disobeying God's commandments. And so I hope you enjoyed your lesson today. Um, take your card, read over it, um, get familiar with that information because that is where you're going to find answers for your worksheet. So remember, fill out your worksheet and as always, complete sentences. Um, let's start with the question, reword it with the answer and you're going to have a good solid sentence. And so again, Thursday we will be looking more into the building and structure of the temple. You guys have a great day. Stay safe and please stay home. God bless.